Welcome to this course on the Python return statement, usage and best practices. As you can see, you'll be learning a lot, starting with the basics of Python's return statement, and then looking at many of the more interesting things Python can do. The Python return statement is a key component of functions and methods. You can use the return statement to make your function send Python objects back to where the function was called. These objects are known as the function's return value, and it is intended that these objects will be used in your program's further computations. Using the return statement effectively is important to writing better and more Pythonic code. In this course, you will learn how to write a Python return statement, how you can return single and multiple values with the return statement, and what are the best practices for using the Python return statement. For background information on using functions in general, you should look for the tutorial and course on defining your own Python functions. This course is based on a tutorial by Leodonis Pozo Ramos. I'm Howard Francis, and I'm excited to be leading you through this course. Let's get started. Let's begin by reviewing what a Python function is. Just about every programming language supports user-written functions. Depending on the language, they could be called subroutines, methods, subprograms, procedures, and of course, functions. Some languages make a distinction between procedures and functions, the difference being that functions return a value and procedures don't. In Python, they're called functions. A function is a self-contained block of code that encapsulates a specific task or related group of tasks. In Python, all functions return a value, whether you indicate so or not. You'll also hear the term method described in Python. A method can be thought of as a function associated with a class or object. Here's what a function definition looks like. It begins with the keyword def. This is a Python reserved word to indicate that what follows is a function definition. Next is the actual name of the function. This can be any valid Python identifier, and it's best to use a name that indicates the purpose of the function. That's followed by a pair of parentheses, which would include a comma-separated list of parameter names, if any, that the function was going to use. By the way, the angle and square brackets are just placeholders here. You wouldn't actually type them in your function definitions but you would type the parentheses, even if they were supposed to be empty. A colon is used to indicate the end of the function header. What then follows are the Python instructions needed for your function to perform its task. This is referred to as the body of the function, and it is always indented under the function header. When you want to use a function, you type the function name, and then inside a set of parentheses, you provide argument values for each of the parameters. And again, even if there are no parameters, you still need parentheses. They would just be empty. Nothing would be in between them. The tutorial uses this notation for modeling a function definition and a function call. Again, you can see the keyword def, followed by a function name, and then parameter variables in parentheses then the body of the function indented below the header. And a function call where you can see argument values being provided. Next, we'll specifically look at the return statement. Now let's look at Python's return statement. The Python return statement is a statement used inside a function or method to send the function's result back to where the function was called. It consists of the keyword return, followed by an optional return value. The return value can be any Python object. But remember, everything in Python is an object. So you can return numbers, collection types, basically anything. If you don't provide a return value, Python will return the value none. If you don't even have a return statement, Python will still return none. These last two cases are examples of an implicit return value, and we'll look at that first. Again, if you don't provide a return value, 
or if you don't even have a return statement, none will be used as the return value. Keep in mind if you're calling functions interactively, where normally you see the return value of a function, if the return value is none, the interpreter won't display it. Python's print function is an example of a function that returns none because we think of it as not actually returning a value at all. If we just print something, we see the output, but no return value. If we actually want to see the return value, let's save the result of the function call to a variable. We still see the output, but now we can see the value of return value by printing it. And as you can see, it is none. Here's another example. If a return statement isn't provided, then it too is going to have a return value of none. So if I define my function add one, takes a parameter, which we'll call x, and notice we don't have a return statement at all, we're going to create a variable result to save what we get when we add 1 to x. But that's it. If I call add 1 and provide it a number, we're expecting 6 because within the function, 6 was computed, but we didn't do anything with it. Again, if I want to see the return value, let's save it. This function didn't return a value, didn't have a return statement at all. And so Python used none as its return value. Perhaps the author of this function meant to return the result. And we'll take a look at how that's done next when we look at explicit return statements. Now let's look at explicit return statements. When a Python function executes an explicit return statement, the function immediately ends its execution and sends the return value back to the calling environment. As previously mentioned, a return statement begins with the keyword return, followed by an optional return value. For example, in this simple function, the statement return 42 means the number 42 will be returned back to where the function was called. Just a simple function with a single return statement. And that's it. When I call this function, I get the number 42 back. And since we are in the interpreter, that number is displayed. The return value for a function can be used in any expression. So I can save it to a variable or just use it directly from the function call. So here I am saving it to the value num. And there it is. But I can also do it with a calculation. There are multiplying it by two. And here I am adding five to it. And in each case, the number 42 is put in place of where the function call was in that expression. And then the rest of the expression is evaluated. So I got 42 times two, 84 and then 42 plus 5, 47. The operations have to make sense. Since this function returns a number, its function call can only be used where a number would be valid. You can't use a return statement outside of a function. It generates a syntax error. So if I try just a return statement, return 42, that you can see at the bottom of the screen, my interpreter told me syntax error, return outside function. Return statements only make sense inside the body of a function. And recall that methods, regular methods, class methods, static methods, are just functions within the context of a class or an object. So anything you've seen here about functions applies to methods as well. 
Here's another example. This function expects a list of integers as a parameter and returns a new list with only the even numbers from the original list. This function uses a Python syntax called list comprehension. It's a way to simplify a common for if nested coding structure, which filters a list looking for those elements meeting a specific condition. Real Python has many resources for list comprehension, some of which are linked below. If we take a look at the function more closely, we see that it takes an argument, a list of numbers, called numbers. We then look through the list, one element at a time, for those numbers which are divisible by two. If a number is divisible by two, then its result, modulus two, is zero. Zero itself is considered a false value. So if you want the condition after the word if to be true, you have to put not in front of it. So this will build up a new list selecting from numbers those elements which have a remainder of zero when divided by two. That list is saved to the variable even nums, which in the next line is used as the return value. So the return value here will be that newly created list. So if we import this, and then call get even on a list of numbers. Since we're in the interpreter, the return value will be displayed when the function finishes executing. And we can see we get the numbers two, four, and six. That list created from the original list. The return value can be any valid Python expression. So we could simplify the get even method by just returning the result from the list comprehension without saving it to a different variable name. So I could remove that and just return the list comprehension. So let's save that. And I'll restart my environment so I can re-import it. from evens, import our new, get even. But again, give it a list of some numbers and it will provide for us a new list with just the even numbers. Here's another example where I can use Python's sum and length functions to write a new function to find the mean of a collection of numbers. Just returning the expression where I take the sum divided by the length. I won't work through this one, but feel free to experiment with it on your own. A common source of confusion is the difference between returning a value and outputting a value. And we'll go into that next. Now let's take a look at the difference between returning a value and printing a value. It does seem like returning and printing are very similar operations. It's because they both do produce some type of result. And these similarities are even more noticeable when working interactively. Let's compare two functions that both provide the greeting, hello world. One does this by printing the message, the other by returning it. So let's go ahead and define this first function. and let's call it. And since the function is designed to produce output, we see the greeting displayed. Now let's do the returning version. This one returns the greeting, hello world. When I call this, the interpreter once the function has finished executing, we'll display the return value. And we get the string, hello world. 
Notice in this case, the quotes telling us that the return value is a string object. They didn't appear in the print version since we were telling Python to print a string and the print function doesn't display the quotes. Well, that would suggest to us that the differences are even harder to detect when performing the same experiment with a number instead of a string. So here we have functions that are printing and returning the number 42. This first function prints the number 42. And so when I call it, it carries out its one statement, which displays the output. Remember, it does return none, but none isn't showed in the interpreter when that's the return value. And here's our old friend return 42. And again, when I call return 42, it only has the return statement, which the interpreter then takes the return value and displays it. So the output's identical. So does it really matter? Well, it matters when you're writing scripts. Let's take a look at this program. It defines a function to add two numbers, and then it calls that function to add two plus two. The function returns, but does not display the result, which makes sense. And so later we would like to perform an operation using that function, so we call it to add the numbers two plus two. Now, if I just import the add function and call it interactively, because we're in the interpreter, the interpreter is going to run the function, get the return value, and display it for us. However, if I run the entire program by importing the entire module, I don't see any output. This entire program was executed. The add function was defined, and I performed the add operation on two and two. But I didn't have an output statement, so there is no output. I could even, if I wanted to, execute this from the command line. And again, the entire program is run. And with no output statement, there's nothing to display. In a script, if I want something displayed, it must use a print statement. I don't want to put the print statement in the function. We'll be using this function in many different contexts, and we won't always want the sum displayed when it's called. So in this particular execution of the program, the intent is to display the result of this function call. It's down here where we want to include the print statement. So we add the print statement and the function call where we actually want the result displayed. And now, if I run this program, I do indeed see the result. And if I did this interactively by importing the entire module, the program is run and I do get the output of four. Since in practice, we do much more with scripts than we do interactively, we can't count on the interpreter to display results for us. So be sure to use a print statement anytime you want something output. Now that we understand the role of the return statement, we can start exploring the different ways it can be used. First, we'll look at how you can return multiple values in a single return statement.